Hello students, I'm Dr. Arpita De. Welcome to my YouTube channel. The topic for today's discussion is vernalization. Vernalization is the phenomenon of exposing seeds, bulbs or seedlings to cold or chilling temperatures that is between the freezing point to 10 degrees Celsius to accelerate the onset of reproductive phase. This acceleration of the onset of reproductive phase implies that the dormant period is shortened or cut short. That means the vegetative phase becomes shorter and onset of flowering and fruit setting is hastened. Lysenko in 1938 first coined the term jarovization which means the god of spring and he later translated it to vernalization. Now when a vernalized plant or a plant exposed to cold temperature is again treated or exposed to warm temperature, it is said devernalization or the plant is said to be devernalized. Now we will come to this diagram. This diagram shows a slightly germinated seed which is kept at 5 degrees Celsius. Now this seed when treated with chilling temperature gives a growth which is pretty luxuriant. On contrary when it is not vernalized or when it is kept at ordinary room temperature it gives a Roset appearance that means stunted growth. This proves what? Vernalization helps in proper luxuriant growth of plants. Now we will come to the various types of vernalization. Vernalization is broadly divided into two types, facultative and obligate. In facultative vernalization, we see plants flower earlier following exposure to low temperature. This, this means what? The, flower, uh, the plant will flower pretty earlier. This is seen in winter annual triticale. And in obligate vernalization, what we see, the plants flower following exposure to low temperature for a desired period of time. This means what? The plant will flower, but it needs a considerable period of time in chilling temperature or cold temperature. This is seen in cabbage. Next we see the site of vernalization. The site of vernalization is metabolically active shoot apical meristem. Next we come to vernalin. Vernalin is a hypothetical hormone or plant growth substance that mediates vernalization. It is said to perform in meristematic regions of plants exposed to low temperatures. Now we will see the role of vernalin in long day plants and short day plants. In long day plants we see vernalin is present and the result is flowering. And in short day plants, we see vernalin is not present and the result is no flowering. Now we'll see how is it happening. This is the key section which depicts the main action of vernalin. Vernalin gets converted to gibberellin in the presence of anthocyanin in long day plants which leads to flowering. On contrary, in short day plants, what happens? Vernalin doesn't get converted to gibberellin due to absence of anthocyanin, which leads to no flowering. Finally, we'll come to the mechanism or pattern of gene expression in vernalization. Here we see the role of three major genes, FLC or flower locus C gene, FD or flowering locus D gene and FD is flowering locus T gene. Now, these three genes are very important in the mechanism of vernalization. 
The first one, FLC, is a repressor of flowering, but the rest two, FD and FT, are flowering genes. That means they promote flowering. SOC1 is suppressor of overexpression of constants 1. This is also a flowering gene. Now, FLC or flower locus C gene is a repressor of flowering and it is highly expressed in non vernalized shoot apical meristem. And after vernalization, FLC gene is epigenetically switched off, thus promoting flowering in response to long days. That means what? FLC expression is very high in vegetative phase since it is a repressor of flowering. On contrary, FD, FT and SOC1 or SOC1 are all flowering genes. That means what? They promote flowering. Okay. FT is found in the leaves. FD is found in shoot apical meristem and SOC1 is also found in shoot apical meristem. Now when FLC is active, they will, it will inhibit FT, FD and SOC1. This will lead to no flowering because the suppressor or the repressor gene is active. Therefore, it is inhibiting or repressing the flowering promoters or the gene that promotes flowering. Next, we come to these three genes. VRN1, VRN2 and VIN3. VRN1 and VRN2 are vernalization 1 and vernalization 2. These genes become active during vernalization. VIN3 is vernalization insensitive. Now let's see what happens to these. When VRN1, VRN2 and VIN3 are active, they together they will all inhibit FLC and when FLC is inhibited, what is the result? The result is flowering because FLC as we had studied earlier, FLC is a repressor of flowering. When the repressor of flowering is inhibited, so then what will happen? Flowering occurs. This is the brief mechanism or pattern of gene expression in vernalization. Now we will come to the various applications of vernalization. Vernalization, as we have discussed earlier, hastens the onset of reproductive phase, thus promoting early flowering and fruit setting. It also makes the plant resistant to cold temperature and fungal diseases. And finally, crop improvement leading to economic growth. Now when fruiting uh, and flowering occurs earlier, this means what? It will lead to agricultural growth which paves way for economic growth. So these are the few applications of vernalization. If you find this video helpful, do share it with your friends and hit the bell icon to subscribe my channel. Thank you so much for your kind attention.